idea. We're going to now go into these purchase orders either here, searching for them here when we get the box of goods, and then we're going to uh, make, make a bill or a check form out of it at this point in time. Now, also just realize that if you had a larger company, as the company gets bigger, you might have someone counting the the inventory in like a warehouse or something like that. Oftentimes you would like them to be able to count the inventory without having access to the purchase order because then they'll actually physically count the inventory and they won't just know what the number is. So that's one internal control you can kind of think about as you kind of as you as you scale up. But typically we would expect the box of guitars to match the numbers that we had on the purchase order. So over here, we've got our options of sending. We can send the purchase order again. We can copy it to a bill, but we're not gonna make a bill this time. We're gonna make uh, an, a check or expense type of form. And so we're not gonna do this step this time. Instead, we're gonna go to the plus button up top and we can go to an expense or check form. Remember, these are two basically almost identical forms in that they decrease the checking account. But the check form, of course, has a check number related to it imagining that we're actually physically writing the check or printing the check out of the system. So we're going to make this for Epiphone. I'm going to say it's for Epiphone. There's our vendor. And then as we do that, notice QuickBooks has this nice thing over here that says, hey, I'm paraphrasing. We've got these two, these two items and this bill down here. We're just going to add these items in to connect it out. So I'm going to say purchase order. Let's add the information from the purchase order that you entered last time. And then I'm going to add this purchase order as well. So we're going to add those. Now, if I scroll down, we can see the activity, but let's just populate the, the, the top of it here just to make sure I get everything the way we want it. It's a cash and we're going to say, okay, mail in, let's pay, let's make it as of the 14th this time. So let's, that's good. That's a good date. Let's keep it there. And then I'm going to make the check number. Now, if I'm actually physically writing checks, then I'm going to start with one. Oh, I'm going to put one oh oh four in the check number here to try to match our bank reconciliations that we'll do uh, at the end of this in our practice problem. If you're actually writing the check, then uh, you could print it later, meaning you'd have to actually buy physical checks, put them into the printer, and then use QuickBooks to print the check. Or you might have a checkbook, for example, that you're manually writing the checks, which already have a check number on it, and you want to make sure that you're tying out the check numbers here to the physical checks that you're writing, which you should only have to do the first time you enter the check because everyone after that should, should automatically populate the check numbers. Now also note you've got the links up top. So if you've got two, two links that are indicated, if you click on that, you can actually go to the purchase orders that are used to and, and to populate here. That is a really good feature within QuickBooks, these links uh, between the forms, which if you've learned accounting from just debits and credits in like a classroom, uh, you might not have a full appreciation of, uh, so you want to kind of get an idea of how all these forms are tied together. Notice that we're not using the, so if I scroll down here, we've got the check number. We're not using the category tag because we're not applying this check for something like the purchase of uh, a the telephone bill or something like that, where we would just assign the category. So I'm going to collapse that, but instead we're using the items, the inventory items that we set up and then we put them into the purchase order. So the items are going to be what drives the transaction that will be impacted when we record this. So we've got our list of items here that we populated directly from the purchase order. And then we've got our amounts. The amounts are the amounts at cost, not the, not the sales price. This is what they put them on there at cost. Also note that we've got these two people here that we have the customer added because we imagined that we bought these items specifically for this customer and we want to turn around and make an invoice for them now that we have the items. And this kind of gives us a reminder of that. We also have the links over here that give us an indication that each of these line items are linked. We could add more to this check uh, as well down here with items that are possibly not linked and so on. And you could, you could sort these two if you wanted to sort them. Uh, notice that you have this billable option here. The, if you've used the desktop version, this is one area where the desktop version, I think has this kind of worked out a little bit better than the online version. Cause you would think you can kind of check these off as billable items. And then when you, when you turn around to invoice Eric music, I'll just test this out just to show you. Then, then these items will pull over 
into the invoice. But the problem is I believe they're going to pull over at cost instead of pulling over the sales price, even though we're using an item. So you might be used to that with the desktop version. You got to be very careful of it here. I'll just show you what I mean uh, right now. But before I do that, I'm going to go to the tab to the right, right click, duplicate another tab. I'm going to pull that all the way to the left just so I can check out a couple things here. So I want to go to the sales tab and just see where our products and services. So if I go into a product and service here, which if you were in the other view, the business view would be under the get paid and paid area. And then under the get paid, it would be under products and services. So there it is under the business view. If we looked at some of these inventory items, Notice we've got the cost and the sales price. So those are different. We're buying them now. We're going to be buying them at the cost. And then when we sell them with an invoice, we'll be that that should populate with the sales price, not the cost. But oftentimes when we use this billable form in the online version, it's not able to to pull over the fact that the item it's not pulling over the item. It's pulling over the billable kind of component to it, the cost kind of component to it. So that that's a little bit a little bit wonky there or a little bit different than you might see on the desktop version if you're used to that so just be aware the other thing i want to point out is if i go to these options to turn that billable item on we went into the cog up top and we went into the account and settings then we went into the expenses and then we went into the bills and expenses and right here you see it says uh, make expenses and items billable and then down here it says track billable expenses and items as income. That means when I pull it over, it's gonna put it into hopefully an income account instead instead of like reimbursing like an expense type of account. But it still may not pull over the actual sales price, but rather the cost, even though it's gonna put it into an income account. What we would like it to do is be driven by the item uh, to determine where it's gonna go in terms of the account that will be impacted. But that's the feature that kind of tells you that, that that billable thing is there. Okay, let's close out this whole tab now. I'm going to close out this whole tab and then go back to our check form. So the check form looks good. What's this going to do? Well, it's a check form. It's going to decrease the checking account. And the other side is going to be going to driven by these items, the inventory account, putting them on the books. And then it's also going to have a sub ledger effect in that it's going to also be tracking the units of inventory because we have a perpetual inventory system set up. So let's check that out. So at the bottom, we have the option cancel clear. We can print the check. We can order checks. We can make this reoccurring and we can void and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, let's save and close it down below. And then just to let you know what happens on the invoice, we're not going to actually uh, populate the, the invoice yet or record it, but let's hit the plus button and just imagine that we turned around and sold this to that customer, which was Eric Music. So if I go to Eric Music tab, we've got this item to pull in. But notice that if I pull this item in, if I add this item in, it puts it on there at $400, which I believe is the cost. Because if I was to type this in ELP, it should pull in the sales price, which is $500 per, per unit. That's the problem. So we could kind of use this to, to show when I put in Eric Music that the billable item is going to pull over, but it's not like a perfect link right there because again, it's not really using the item to record it. It's kind of using that billable feature. And so that kind of, that'll mess things up a bit. So be quite careful of that. We'll talk more about some of the issues with that billable item later and we'll record this in the future and just show how that'll work. Uh, so do you want to leave without saving? I'm going to say yes. I'm not going to save this yet. We'll do that in the future. Let's go to the balance sheet now and run the report. I'm going to hold control, scroll up a bit. We should see then the checking account's going to go down. So if I go into the checking account, we could check out the checking. There's the check form number. Other side go into the split account because there's multiple line items. That's why it goes to the split, even though all of the other one went to the income or the uh, inventory account there it is closing that back out and then i'm going to go back to the form the other side's also on the balance sheet under inventory so if we go into inventory then we should see that that check there it is there it is looks good Mui b to the n and so notice that it, it put it in here these are all the same check 
and I put it in here in multiple line items matching the line items that are in the on the uh, the form for the check. Let's also go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate the tab so I can look at the inventory report. Just make sure that that ties out because we're using a perpetual inventory system. So that's gonna be on the reports on the left hand side. And I'm gonna close the boogie and I could just type in here inventory. Let's look at the inventory valuation summary and range to the change from 010123. Let's just do <laughs> as of 123123. I'll just say the end of the year, even though we're at the beginning of the year. But this is the year to date. So we're at the 39. 976 here's our units of inventory thus far that should tie out that 39 976 to what's on the balance sheet and it does so that's good news